Hey traders, welcome to a global macro update. Hopefully you're having a great day. This is the first day of July 2020. So brand new month, always exciting to start a new month. Hopefully your June went well and uh, hopefully your July will be just as prosperous, if not more. So we're gonna touch on the economic calendar for today. We did have some numbers come out here for the non-farm employment change was worse than the actual forecast, but we do see that the purchasing managers index, the PMI numbers are actually above 52.6 uh, here, or at 52.6, above the forecast of 49.5. So pretty surprising to see, uh, in my personal opinion, but we can definitely see that things are picking up. Economic data indicators for America are shifting to a point where they're actually turning positive. So I think the overall risk on sentiment is going to continue which means that equity prices will probably continue to go up slowly here and uh, we're going to be looking at BTC as a risk on asset as well so we are looking at the crypto market in a bullish perspective and viewpoint as of now we do have a pretty important level that we're looking at for a potential level of supply but we'll look at that when we get right into the charts all right uh, quick discussion about the comments on TikTok. We, uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. One person says, King Kangos says, what do you think about XRP? I personally don't love XRP. I know that they made a lot of partnerships and um, in that department, they're going through all the regulatory hoops in order to do it properly. So then they can actually be the uh, global transactor, um, really. Kind of basically shaping up to be the next swift system to some degree but i get the positive reasons why people like it but in terms of the actual price action it is extremely relatively weak compared to the other alts that we are looking at so if you're comparing xrp to things like ethereum binance coin if you're comparing it to things like Chainlink, xrp is relatively weak macro micro every Every way you look at the price action, XRP is extremely weak compared to other alts that provide a better possible uh, potential for appreciation in my personal view. So from the fundamental standpoint, yeah, they're, they're making progress and they are going about trying to basically reinvent SWIFT the proper way by going through all the regulatory hoops. But I do not think that it is a good place to store wealth for the long term right now because the fact that in terms of relative strength there's other areas within the cryptocurrency market that are able to provide a better overall investment or trade if you're just long or buying cryptocurrencies in my personal belief so that's my personal view on xrp um, we can look at that if you'd like so we can look at relative strength and actually give you valid reasons and explain it on a chart as to why I think that XRP is not the best investment in the cryptocurrency market. There's, in my opinion, better opportunities out there, but that's just my personal belief. So let's get back into the global macro update. So we got a little bit of a news headline here. I was pretty surprised when I read this. Gold industry shaken as 83 tons. That's a lot of fake gold bars used to secure $2 billion in loans in China. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but that's pretty unbelievable. The gold, everyone talks about you can't just print gold, right? But uh, we can see that some people are uh, disguising copper and other metals as gold. The gold industry has been shaken after it was discovered that 83 tons of fake gold bars have been used as collateral for loans worth 20 billion won from 14 financial institutions to a major gold jewelry manufacturer in Wuhan, China, the same place that uh, the virus has been located to be. Uh, kind of started from this amount of gold would be equivalent to 22 percent of china's annual gold production and 4.2 percent of the state's gold reserve as of 2019 so that's a tremendous amount of gold that is not really gold so we'll see how this gold uh, we'll see how this goes not gold um you can read more about it as well but i thought that was a pretty interesting news article uh that i just found Next thing we're going to look at is discussion of Tether. We just made a TikTok about this, but we can see that stable coins are extremely, extremely important in this day and age of 
cryptocurrencies where yes you do have the hodlers that are just holding and don't care about the ups and downs and they're holding for years and years and years but there's a large group of people who want that option to store their capital inside something that is less volatile and this is where stable coins come in because like tether a lot of these stable coins uh die is also pegged to the us dollar so it's not like it's stable as in it doesn't move the us dollar does move as well and the us dollar index has actually gone down recently which means you're actually losing value in relation to other currencies but overall it's gonna be a lot less volatile compared to btc you're not going to get like 50% market meltdowns in a day. Um, it just does not happen. There's too much demand for the currency. But in BTC, it, it has happened before, clearly, back in the li liquidation event. So it's just the discussion that this is extremely important within the overall cryptocurrency market. And people that are in the, the head of policymakers and the people that are heads of central banks, they're extremely worried about this because... We can argue and we can complain and argue and everything that BTC and other cryptocurrencies are too volatile. Yes, but if you have a privatized cryptocurrency like Libra that is a stable coin backed with the US dollar, why would you use the US dollar? It, it does not, you don't need it. it. It's kind of non-existent in the realm of the digital world that we live in. If you have something like Libra that is going to be instant and you can transact it anywhere, you don't need the SWIFT system, and you can basically bypass the United States' guard on global remittance, because that's what the SWIFT system is. So that's a huge, powerful uh, piece of technology that is now getting implemented in the world really by people using tether right and we can see it's the most used cryptocurrency in the world everyone thinks it's bitcoin no bitcoin has the transactional volume of over 16 billion dollars in a daily time frame so in a 24-hour time frame which seems like a lot right tether has over 20 billion so in terms of how much people use it how much transactions are taking place Tether beats Bitcoin, and that, in my opinion, is pretty surprising. Um, there are a lot of scandals with Tether. We've already talked about them. You can actually go on our website, and we have an entire blog post talking about the Bitfinex Tether scandal, which I do recommend reading if you are unaware of the uh, potential risks that are with using Tether. I know everyone in the crypto realm basically uses Tether that are on derivative exchanges, like Bybit offers uh, Tether as a way to hold cryptocurrencies. And, you know, that works, but it's definitely a little bit worrying because this is the most liquid stable coin there is within the market. And we don't really have another one that has this sort of volume kind of underlying within the market. So it provides a lot of liquidity, which is what traders are looking for. But it also has some potential negatives as well. Read more about that within our blog posts. All right, on to some different topics here. Fed policymakers committed to providing open-ended support to U.S. economy. Minutes show. So just want to touch on this. The fact that I do not think that the payment the checks to everyday americans and citizens i don't think it'll stop i think it'll keep on continuing because overall the economy is not actually getting better you know people are hesitating to go out and go get beer go to a restaurant go to the movies all that stuff and i think there's going to be some long lasting effects from the lockdown from the shift in psychology of the overall globe not just the americans but obviously with people trying to save more money they don't know if there's going to be a next wave they're trying to have a little nest egg in case there is you know another wave where they do have to get uh maybe not uh fired but let go for a short amount of time and they have that little nest egg they're not going to spend as much money overall it's deflationary it's not uh economically expansionary like the Federal Reserve and central banks want. So that's definitely something that they're going to have to fight. And I think that they're just going to print money and give it to people in order to try to continue the economic expansion from uh, 
from reversing basically. Last thing we're gonna to touch on before we get and jump right into the charts here, Tesla beating, I believe Toyota, being the largest automaker in terms of market cap. You can see Tesla is now worth more than triple the combined value of the US automakers, General Motors Co. and Ford Motors. That is unbelievable. Yeah, and uh, they overtook former frontrunner Toyota Motors. So yeah, Eli Musk, absolute beast. He now is the CEO and owner of the largest uh, car manufacturer in the world in terms of market cap. So we can check out those charts if we want in a little bit. But first, we're gonna look at the SPX, which is the S&P 500 index. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below and we'll be sure to ask or answer any questions that you would like. But first, let's talk about the S&P 500. So we already talked about this descending wedge, breaking to the upside, previous levels of support and resistance confluencing with the descending zone to create a strong level of demand. Once you got that initial push up, breaking the previous high to form a new high, you get that nice staircase where you get a break of resistance, creating a series of higher highs and higher lows, coming up to our key level of resistance at around 3150, 3160, somewhere around there. We've gone through this structure uh, time and time again on the global macro update and things are playing nicely and um, not much more to say. Things are just working out pretty well. There is not really anything to go off of uh, from the previous video. We did make a for we did form and break to a new high. We did have a little bit of a sell off here, but it did hold the previous high right here into a new level of support. And then we broke into a new high and then we could also staircase right here, form a little bit of a pullback and then push up again, making that next higher high. But overall, we are forming a nice move to the upside. Overall risk on sentiment is still uh, chugging along and going nicely here in my personal view. Quick look at the Russell 2000. We did not break the right shoulder. So that for me tells me that the Russell 2000 and overall uh, small caps are not really seeing the bids uh, like the S&P is seeing less speculation overall in the small caps which you know if you're if you have a small amount of money or a large amount of, if you have any amount of money really and if you have to bet that either small caps are going to do well or large caps are going to do well in this market environment what would you pick i would definitely say large caps the ones that are the stay-at-home companies the ones that are in the nasdaq are going to be the ones that you're going to be looking to keep your capital in. And we see that right here, huge discrepancy between the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, I believe, has made an all-time high, maybe just about, um, but we're testing the previous all-time high right here that we made on June 23rd. So huge discrepancy. This is why I'm saying that uh, if you're looking at shorting an index, the NASDAQ is definitely not it. NASDAQ is one of, if not the most bullish indexes that I could find globally, not just in the States, globally. So definitely keep an eye out on that. And the Russell 2000 is gonna be a lot less bullish. We're still in the structure that could potentially play out as a head and shoulders if things turn around. But I do expect the risk on sentiment to continue as the S&P, as the NASDAQ, uh, continue to push breaking the recent highs to form newer highs. Maybe not so much on the S&P, it's just reaching the high, but NASDAQ really, really showing its strength. Something you know, we already talked about this in previous videos, but the volatility index, the VIX, actually broke the support at around $30 and now falling. So when you see the VIX falling, decreasing in volatility, Usually, or if not always, the S&P is slowly climbing up in the market. Usually, uh, things take the staircase up and the elevator down. And when we see decreasing volatility, it's overall a risk on environment because if there's less volatility and more slow, steady climbing towards the upside, people are going to be looking to put their capital and park it in things like uh, the S&P 500 because it's a risk on asset that is able to provide a much higher return compared to things like bonds or cash, obviously. So overall risk on sentiment in my personal view, just looking at the U.S. equities market. Going to take a quick look at the TikTok comments and then we're going to jump right back into the video. 
All right. So Joshua said, expect me to hit 16K next couple weeks. Can't see the graph from I am where, but not sure what you're... Joshua, 16K. So I think you mean the NASDAQ maybe? Um, maybe give me a, a heads up on what you're talking about. If you're saying 16K, the NASDAQ's currently at 10.3. So you might mean the NASDAQ. That's a pretty massive move that you're looking for. Um, I wish you the very best of luck. I agree in the overall direction right now in that it's currently a very risk on sentiment environment for global investors where they're seeking higher risk tolerance instruments like indexes and equities. We can see the NASDAQ absolutely booming. So yeah, I completely agree with you on the overall direction. Can't see graph. So we do have this on YouTube live as well. So if you want to see a more clear picture of what we're going over, what we're analyzing, what we're checking out, definitely check out the YouTube live. Our YouTube name is just Performante. So you can check that out in more detail as well. Um, Joshua says, check out DQ, fair value is 295. DQ has a beautifully chart. Um, so we'll look at that at, uh, uh, maybe we'll look at that right now. Maybe we'll look at that right now. We'll switch it up a little bit. All right, let's look at DQ. I don't know any of the fundamentals. I don't follow equities too much. Um, but let's look at... Wow, massive spike up, hey, holy crap. So you got a very strong resistance at $70. So the fact that it broke $70 is, is important. Oh, there we go, all right. That's a very important. So we could retest that zone, 69, 70 bucks. That would be a really, really good thing to see in my personal opinion in terms of a retest. Potential ascending wedge as well. So you might not get the full retest all the way to $70. Let's see if that can go any further back. Uh, I don't really like it there. I'm going to keep that there and I'm going to get a type B and a type A and then a type B candle closure right there. So I got one, two, three, four rejections of this ascending zone giving me a valid resistance that broke and then we can clearly see the ascending zone right here. Very well respected that is creating our ascending wedge. So it melted up which ascending wedges can do. It's not just a bearish pattern. So that's definitely an extremely bullish structure. And then you're looking for sideways zones of sensitivity or horizontal zones of sensitivity in order to potentially look for retests to validate the previously broken zone. So what I'm currently seeing right now is if we get a potential retest to like 81 bucks, that would be looking great. And 76 bucks would still be looking good. I think beyond that, you might be getting back into the ascending wedge, which wouldn't be ideal. You really want to see the price hold above this red zone right here, ideally, because this was the previous ascending zone that connected the series of higher highs, broke, squeezing from this support zone that was increasingly going higher than the resistance. And now we got that big move towards the upside. So overall, it looks great. And we can put a little midpoint there, but I would say that's a phenomenal move. And then if you're just looking at the size of the wedge, if you want a potential zone for take profits or next levels of hesitation, you know, you're looking at 125. Obviously, this is a massive weekly chart, but if you just look at it in terms of the weekly chart, looking at structure, that would be a potential next zone that I would be looking to target. And then if you get a nice little retest, support below that zone, you know, 4.3, 4.2. If you're a little bit higher right here, 3.5, somewhere around there. That's a pretty good trade in my personal view if it does have a nice retest validation that there's support in that area. Um, I can't really open that uh, link there. But anyways, that is my analysis on DQ. I know nothing about the fundamentals, just warning you. Um, I haven't checked for it, nothing. This is just me opening up a chart, looking at it, and then coming to my own conclusions, just saying. So let's leave that, go back to our global macro update. Joshua, I will be going over the BTC 
analysis a little bit later in this video. So stay tuned for that. It is coming. All right, quick look at the global equities here or global indexes. Not much has happened. We've been consolidating sideways, failing to break into a higher high or at least test the previous high on a lot of these structures, but we've also held the support zone. So we're consolidating. You could say we're in a descending triangle, a symmetrical triangle, but we're in a squeeze and I think that we are going to either break to the upside or to the downside. I'm basically looking at the US as the leader for the globe. Um, if you're gonna put capital somewhere, the US is probably one of the best bets in order to try to grow it. Um, so that's where I'm mainly looking to see if we're gonna get another leg down. If we are, global indexes are probably gonna to fall too. But right now the S&P is doing pretty well, broke out of its descending wedge. The NASDAQ is absolutely rocketing to basically all time highs. So I view the current market as a risk on environment where global investors are looking to gain some price appreciation through more speculative instruments and assets. So that's the way I'm gonna view the market. All right, so we're gonna look at the DXY. So this is in confluence with the overall sentiment that we see. So if it's a risk on environment, if you have cash, you're probably going to be putting it in places that will give you a better reward or earning or some sort of payout or some sort of return on your capital, right? It just makes sense. You wanna grow your money. Cash is not the place to do it. Bonds is not the place to do it. You're looking to do it in more speculative investments. And we see the US dollar currency index, which is mainly inverse Euro USD chart, because this is comprised 60% of the Euro is moving to the downside. So the US dollar is weakening, which is yet again, a risk on indication. If this ascending wedge, ascending triangle, depending on if you wanna take this off or on, if this breaks to the downside, I do expect the bullishness of the overall stock market, crypto market to continue. But if it holds this higher low and squeezes further and actually breaks to the upside where we're seeing strength in the US dollar, it means people are fleeing from trades, investments that are more speculative that could potentially turn to the downside for them. So then they're gonna park their cash in cash or park their capital and cash in order to reduce the amount of risk on the overall portfolio just makes sense so that is the overall view in terms of the dxy king said thank you very much for the info you're the best thank you very much i really appreciate the kind words and uh, we do this every weekday so if you are looking for a second opinion just want to discuss markets i absolutely love talking about Financial markets, uh, not a certain single asset classes, but like asset classes across the board, I absolutely love it. So um, if you're interested in discussing this more often or would like a second review, second review, we are here every weekday. So thanks for coming. I appreciate that greatly. So let's get back into the charts. We've already discussed the DXY looking at the two different scenarios that we have that could play out into the market. We do have a well-respected resistance in the ascending zone. So We'll let the price action speak for itself. We don't want to project our bias in the overall market. While we were in our triangle for the DXY, right here, this large symmetrical triangle, we were talking about a potential move up for the US dollar, meaning that US dollar will strengthen. And this could still play out, this thesis. This is a macro theory presented by Brent Johnson in his what he calls dollar milkshake theory. And this basically is a theory that argues that there's a lot of USD denoted debt in the world. And in order for people to pay off that debt, they need to purchase USD. They need to put a bid on USD to pay off their debts. And if debts increase, Companies, countries will want to pay off their debt sooner. It's a big short squeeze. If you're borrowing something and then purchasing an asset like a machine, products, a commodity versus, uh, you know, in exchange of the currency, that's a short, that's a short play. Um, so a lot of people are short the US dollar. So if it does come into a possible short squeeze, that environment is 
um, is uh, going to cultivate a potential short squeeze because the setup is there. There just needs to be some sort of uh, fire, some trigger, and we already saw a little sneak peek of that in my personal view because when we had the initial sell-off back in March where everything, not just the stock market sold off, gold sold off, silver sold off, oil, crypto, a lot of currencies looking at like um, the Turkish lira, the South African rand, the Russian ruble, the uh, Mexican peso, uh, even the U uh, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, New Zealand dollar, everything crumbled except for a few things. And those few things were the United States dollar, Japanese yen, you saw treasury yields drop, but people rushing into treasuries and gold rebounded pretty quickly after as well, but there isn't that many things that actually did well. So in total uncertainty, fear, worry, global investors in the past have turned to the United States dollar. So if that second wave, that worry, that fear, that uncertainty comes again and rushes back into the markets, my perspective is that there's probably going to be a rush back into the US dollar. Now, why are you thinking the US dollar is so good when the central banks are printing a lot of it? We always talk about that. But one thing to note is we're comparing one currency to another in most cases. So you gotta ask yourself, what's the least bad currency to be in? And because the United States dollar is a world reserve currency, which means that you can use it as a medium of exchange for almost any commodity anywhere in the world without the United States even being a part of the transaction, if that makes sense. So if Brazil's conducting business with Switzerland or like England or Australia or whatever two countries, they're most likely going to be conducting the transaction in United States dollars. So there's a huge demand as a world reserve currency. If you are conducting business on the global scale, on the global stage, on the global scale. And that's why the dollar milkshake theory, I think has a potential probability of actually playing out. Um, do you teach by any chance? So we do offer a, uh, Performante premium subscription service within Performante, which is uh, the brand that we hold our education in. And it's primarily cryptocurrency education, but we do provide overall global macro uh, analysis, understanding it, you know, what basically we're trying to identify risk on, risk off, how to identify a good setup, when to know, you know, to, to really, really start to push on an extreme risk off or extreme risk on. And, there's a lot that goes into it, obviously, but um, yes, we do provide education if you would like in our Performante Premium Subscription Service. Check it out on our website if you'd like to. Um, Shareface, I believe is how you say your name. Anyone buying WKHS, 20% gain for me. Nice one, okay, let's look at it right now. We're gonna be very uh, active, let's say, with this analysis. So if you have any trades you're in, if you have any stocks that uh, you'd like to look at, definitely just throw them in the comments and we can look at it. So WKHS. And let's bring this to the candles. Holy shit. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. It was at like two bucks and now it's at 20. That's crazy, man. Um, best of luck. Yeah, that's, that's a, I, do not know this company, but man, oh man, that was a huge shot up. Congratulations. If you have purchased any time here, he said a 20% gain. So not, not crazy low. So you probably got in at like 16 bucks, maybe shot up from like start of June at like three bucks. That's crazy. Best of luck on your trade and investment. All right, so now that we've completed that, we're gonna quickly talk about some US government bonds, both a 10 year and five year yield. So we can see that they did get a little bit of a bump up, meaning that there's people leaving bonds and the yield is increasing. So that's, in my opinion, a indication that it is yet again in confluence with the rest of the analysis, a risk on environment or risk on indicator. So that's just bringing even more confluence that we should be looking for longs on risk on instruments. 
All right, so let's discuss uh, now what we talked about quite extensively yesterday, which was gold and silver. Before that, we're going to quickly touch on gold, or sorry, not on gold, on Western Texas Intermediate crude oil on the four hour chart. So I currently see a nice ascending wedge. It's not perfectly valid because we don't have that third touch of the series of higher highs. It'd be nice to see one more push up to see the higher high, but this could also just be a double top potentially with a higher top here. Not extremely valid, but this ascending zone is what I'm going to be looking for. Previous resistance, support, 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 support. So we do see a series of higher lows that is held by a well-respected zone. But something to note, even if it does, oh, let's just get this into the white fat one. So white and thick. So even if it does break this ascending zone right here, I personally would not be looking at the market in a bearish perspective until it breaks around 36. Because even if it does break this ascending zone, we got a series of highs that fail to break into a higher high. So there's a lot of uh, solid sell pressure around this zone. We got pulled back in above the support multiple times here around 36. So when we're looking at this from a larger time frame, this just looks like a sideways consolidation. So I'm gonna view it as such. We can draw ascending zones, descending zones, but I'm gonna view it more as just a horizontal zone. We're going sideways until we potentially get a melt up or we get a breakdown and then you're looking for a break of 36, where then if it goes beyond this zone, you're really looking at a potential uh, down move for oil in my personal opinion and then you can do a lot with that information you know that there's some currencies for example that are positively correlated with crude oil so you can do something with that information as well also when oil is going up obviously it's a risk on indicator because transportation increases production of goods increases that is overall bullishness expansionary uh, phase in the economic cycle type of environment, which is what you want to be looking for if you're a risk on investor. So we don't really see a whole lot more to talk about right now. Uh, it would be nice to get one more touch like that and then break maybe a previous level of support, new level of resistance. That would give me a lot more confidence for this ascending wedge. But as of right now, I still view it as a horizontal channel with a resistance support going sideways with some uh, potential ascending zones if it does validate it a little bit more. All right, so that's going to be US oil. We're then now going to talk about the gold and silver ratio, silver and then gold. But first, we're going to look at the questions here on TikTok. It says, what do you think about SBT and MOV? If you can please review that, really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So before we jump in on gold, silver, and the gold and silver ratio, let's quickly just jump into some of these charts. I don't know anything about the actual fundamentals. Just letting you know. I'm sure you are well aware, but um, oh, I guess that's not the one to look at. All right, so let's first look at SBT. Definitely a lot of them... Um, do you mean the silver boolean EDF? Which SBT are you talking about? Because I'm not exactly sure. Um, Sterling Bancorp, that might be it. It's uh, listed in America, so I assume so. Has decent volume, so maybe. No, Darling Bank, okay. SBT. Hmm, I'm trying to look for it here. SBT, SBT. Yeah, Sterling Bancorp. Okay, it's the one I had. Yeah, yeah. Thought I had the right one. Okay, cool. All good, my man. Um, so let's start off with the weekly chart here. Not a whole lot of information to work with, but definitely we're in a clear downtrend. Got a nice uh, high of around 14 bucks. We've got a major level of resistance to go over on around the $7 range. You got a key level right around here, and then you got a key level right around here. 
and on the daily I'm sure we can get a nice horizontal zone probably actually a descending zone as well but I'm just gonna draw this as well as a potential descending zone like so so that's the way hmm just thinking of where I can potentially put this trend line I think I'm gonna put it right there so we see a descending triangle formation on SBT in my personal view. Let's get the projection on there. Make it a little less, a little less red. And you got a very strong level of support. There we go. And let's just make that very bright. Okay, cool. So that's currently what I see within the overall structure of the market. So let's zoom out and just talk about what we can see right here. All right, so you can kind of play this in two ways. First off, well, okay, well it actually depends if you even if you are long bias or short bias because it depends on obviously. If you think it's a possible, if you're looking at it just as a trade, I wouldn't be looking to long just yet. Definitely long, definitely not. The market structure is extremely bearish. You know, breaking supports, holding resistances, and you get another consolidation. This was a consolidation. This was just a long consolidation. You're breaking to the downside each time. So if you are looking for possible entries, I would say you have to break major market structure before you even look to potentially get into this trade. Because right now, let's just zoom out a little bit longer and just talk a little bit about market structure. So market structure is basically is the price action breaking higher highs or lower lows, or it's just consolidating. So this is right here, uh, not really do nothing state, but it's not doing anything. It's not making a higher high. It's not making a lower low. So unless you're like scalping the lows and the highs and the lows and the highs or highs and lows, whatever the case may be, I personally wouldn't want to be in something like this. I'd rather be in a trending market where it's easier to have a higher strike rate, win loss ratio, whatever it is. It may not be like that for you, but for me, I find myself having a higher win loss ratio when I see a clear direction and a clear trend that I can trade with. If I'm expecting this to move to the upside, and if I see like a little wedge right here, and there's key level of resistance, but I'm assuming that it's gonna break a major level of resistance and hit my target, that's going to be pretty hard because you're assuming that the continuation sideways is going to break. That's going to be one option. Or you could wait until it actually breaks and then you have a momentum to the downside that you're looking for. So momentum, market structure is very important and the current momentum is just consolidating sideways and the market structure looking at the large time frame is definitely bearish. So uh, you did say that you're looking to long buy. So you're looking for an investment, you're looking to buy and hold. Where would you be looking to buy and hold is the big question, right? So you do have a descending zone here, but what if I was the one looking at this company, trying to find a good place to potentially enter, the minimum I would want to see the price pass would be this sideways zone of resistance. Because right now, this is the market structure where you see a consolidation sideways. It could just chop around here for a little while longer. We don't exactly know how long it's going to be right and if it carries the momentum similar to here instead of buying somewhere in here expecting that it's going to break the resistance it could very well continue the trend downwards hold this resistance and fall lower down so it doesn't make sense entering something unless you have confirmation that it has or about to initiate the move that you are anticipating so if i were you what i would do is if we zoom into a smaller time frame here, I'd be looking for a series of steps. So first off, what I'd like to see on the daily time frame, on a large time frame, I want to see a candle break and hold above the key level of resistance. So I don't want to be looking at a four-hour chart. I don't want to be looking at. I don't want to be looking at this for a potential entry until it breaks out of our consolidation with a daily candle confirmation breaking above the key zone. Once that, in pl once that is in place, I know that there's confidence from the buyers able to hold the price up. 
At that point, once I've made a higher high, you're looking for the previous resistance to hold as a new level of support. Once you see you're looking for like type A, so let's say this was the zone, that would be a type B, and this would be a type A, where just the wick touches, and then a type B would be the candle closure. You're looking for those types of candle closures that validate the previous resistance as a new level of support. So once you get validated that yes, this is a new level of support, then I would be saying, okay, the market structure changed, the overall price action structure, this descending wedge, this horizontal zone, this has also broken out. So you got price action confirmation, you got market structure confirmation, and then you also have the support confirmation right there. And if you are looking for longs, that is the point in which I would potentially look for opportunities in where... Um, you'd want to see that validation come in before you really uh, start to take a stab at it. You also have some validation from the descending zone right around here that it's currently right at a pretty vital area. If it does break down here, you have that move to the downside and you can also go like this as well. Because previous support turning into resistance and that's going to be a potential opportunity So we need to basically break five dollars for me to even think about potentially looking to long this opportunity Because right now the overall momentum and the trend is to the downside So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of how we like to trade in terms of structure um, Don't really love using moving averages as much. I just like mainly using market structure on larger time frames, meaning you're either breaking resistances and holding supports, or you're holding supports and breaking resistances, or you're consolidating. There's only, there's only three ways that you can really go, right? You're going sideways, up, or down. And um, until you get enough confirmation that it's gonna be changing direction, you basically wanna to try to continue with the overall trend of the market. All right, so that's going to be the analysis for SBT. Let's go back to another one here. MOV. Movado. Holy, wow, that dumped, hey? That is a big dump. Let's actually go to log. Because this is a pretty large time frame. All right, so that's not so bad. You get a nice uh, series of oops, higher lows there, held by a nice ascending trend line. Pretty good there. And then let's zoom into a smaller time frame. You can also find confluences where you see this same zone act as a previous level of resistance and support right here. And let's make that a lot less bright. Okay, so we got confluence there. That's pretty nice. Definitely, definitely a decent amount of sell pressure. And we can also just look at some horizontal zones looking back if we really want, but that wick shows it right there. So right now, we are at a pretty major zone of support. Held once, attempt to move up. It did get rejected here. And we are still creating higher lows, which is good to see. So to me, this kind of looks like a nice ascending triangle setup. I'd like to see a validation one more time of the resistance before we use that as a potential trade. But the ascending zone is pretty well respected. So what I'd be looking for is on the weekly, we are at a pretty major level of support. We got a huge sell off. So there's probably going to be some level of a bounce. I don't know the fundamentals, I don't know anything about the stock, but uh, just in terms of the overall structure of the price action, massive sell off, you're probably gonna, gonna, gonna get a consolidation right here, but right now it does look like it's holding a nice ascending trend line and a horizontal level of resistance. So it does look like an ascending triangle setup right now. It does break to the upside, you're looking for a higher high, higher low to hold the previous resistance as a new level of support. And then that could be a nice uh, measured move using the opening of the triangle. It might be a little bit wide, so it might go up a little bit more. But overall, that would be the trade that I'd be looking for if you're looking for longs in my personal view. Is break of around $14 and retest of that for a new level 
of support. And if it consolidates, if it breaks this zone, I would not be looking for extreme shorts just yet until it kind of breaks 930 if you are looking for it. And then you got that next major zone right here at around 580. We can see it's a previous support right here, resistance support, support. But oh yeah, overall, I'd definitely be looking for a potential move to the upside instead of looking for shorts because on the weekly and monthly, it's a pretty key level of confluence right there. But we do got to keep in mind that there's a lot of momentum to the downside. So we want to be careful that we're not trying to um, go against the trend. But if it does give clear indications that we could be reversing with clear market structure, price action pattern breaks, that would give us an indication that we could be looking for a possible long. All right. So that's going to be the two stocks that you're looking for. Hopefully you got something out of that. And then we're now going to continue on with the analysis here. We're going to now go to gold and then actually let's look at the gold and silver ratio first. Uh, it did break out to the downside. I am long silver and I am thinking that it's going to continue to go to the upside where we did get a breakdown. Perfect retest of the previous zone of sensitivity within the structure as a new resistance because it was a previous support zone. And I think that the momentum is going to continue to the downside. So in short, I am um, pretty bullish on silver. Gold doesn't look as great as silver. Silver looks phenomenal. Um, when we are looking at the chart of silver, so let's get the chart of silver out first. And, you know, we were playing around here for a little while. We did get a little bit of a push up breaking the previous high. But what we were looking for was that pullback to around that $18 range. This was the retest zone that I was aiming at to get filled in because A, great risk reward parameters and B, very well respected previous level of resistance, which is going to be acting as a new level of support. Very similar to what we had right here. Previous level of resistance, while respected, is now going to be acting as a new level of support. So basically, it's the exact same entry signals in the structure that we're looking for in the previous price action pattern. And, you know, we could get some consolidation. We could get some chop. That does not mind. Like we can see that there was quite a bit of chop in the previous strong push to the upside. I don't mind holding on to this for a little while. I don't need to enter right there. Once I'm in, once I have my trade structure in, I can sit there. I, I, I don't mind paying a little bit more of the fees to carry it over the weekend and whatnot, as long as the structure is looking great. And as of right now, in my opinion, it still looks really solid, it still looks great. You got a nice wick touching the descending resistance, validating it as a new level of support. And within that same candle, you're getting the type B candle closure on the new level of support. So super well respected uh, retest candle right there. We can even zoom in a little bit closer where you see the candle closed right at the previous resistance horizontally, but the candle wick, the furthest point that it fell to within that four hour time frame, just touched that descending zone, which is not gonna be acting as a new level of descending support. So overall, really awesome structure and uh, it's looking pretty bullish. Couldn't really say any more on that. Um, let's now get our analysis on gold. Gonna get a little bit of water and we'll jump right into it. All right, so. A little bit worrying because gold fell quite a bit compared to silver. We're still holding the support, but we did break below this ascending zone here. I don't love that. I would like to, I would have liked to see it hold ideally. And then we have our target of like 1806. So 1800 ish is going to be the main level that we're going to be looking at. So a little, a little bit unfortunate because I would have liked to seen this support hold that retest with this one right here. I would have liked, to, I would have really liked to see that, but unfortunately it didn't happen. What are you going to do? You can't uh, always exactly what you want in the market. Sometimes you just got to deal with what's given to you. So in terms of gold, it's looking, it's looking less good. Um, we, we are breaking back above the zone. So that's one really good thing. So this could just be a wick on a larger time frame. We are on the one hour time frame. So if we are looking at a larger time frame, this could just be a wick similar to what we got right here. So if we go on the four hour 
and then flatten that out a little bit. We can see very clearly that this is just a wick to the downside where there was a, oh, let's just move that a little bit. So there was a lot of buy pressure to push the price back up above the key level of support to close it on the four hour chart right at that main level where we wanna see it close. So overall, it's looking pretty good. Um, the massive wick there was, was not ideal, but silver did not push down that far, which was really nice. And it looks like it's setting up now for a possible move to the upside. So we'll get, we'll get rid of that. And there we go. That's the game plan for gold. Um, I'm currently more biased on silver for a long than gold. So I'm going to, I'm going to be playing that. But if you are looking at a potential for gold, I think a potential stop entry above the current candle would trigger you in. Or if you're looking for a little bit more of a validation, you could wait until this horizontal zone is broken just for a little bit further of a validation. If you are really looking for a little bit of safety, stop off below the previous low, take profit at the size of the symmetrical triangle. You got to run a 2.7 risk reward. So then you get triggered and once it starts moving towards the upside, breaking this key resistance right here, ideally you like to see that close and then you start to see the momentum coming up here. So that's an option right there. If you want to be a little bit more uh, aggressive and just take it right here, that would be my next trade is looking at maybe like a 2.5. Maybe you could reduce it down a little bit more because you do have quite a bit of pressure right around there. So you could bring it down a little bit more. So you get a pretty good risk reward. But yeah, that's going to be the overall structure that I currently see within the market. It's looking pretty good. I'm bullish on precious metals right now. But like I said, silver, in my opinion, is going to be the better trade than gold. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know if it's going to be fact or not. Only time will tell. But from my analysis, that's what it seems like. All right. So that's going to be the overall global macro update. We're now going to go into some crypto talk, a little bit of discussion involving um, BTC and the overall crypto market. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and we'll be able to uh, explain that, give you a little bit more detail. If you are stuck on something, don't really understand it, definitely uh, don't hesitate and we'll be able to help you out here. A little bit of stop pressure coming from the SMP. I'll just close that right there. But, you know, it's pretty normal. We already talked about this potential support, which is right here. It's a little bit larger, but like we saw in the previous resistance to support, we could see another resistance to support. So the market moves in waves. It's not going to go from point A to point B without having some pullbacks, some dips, some ups and downs. And that's just how the market moves. And you got to be patient. You got to be aware of the overall range that the market could be playing into. You got to look at the average um, range that it's been kind of taking in in terms of the recent volatility. And overall, it looks like it's still moving towards the upside with uh, a new high being created. Hopefully it holds the previous resistance as a new support. And it continues going on. Hey man, can you have a look at oil if that's okay? Says Christian. Um, I did oil. So if you do want to go back a little bit, I did it before gold and silver and the gold and silver ratio and before the TikTok Q&A. But if you can't find it, that's not a problem. I'll do it at the end of the video. But uh, the next part of the video is going to be for the crypto market update, which is basically looking at uh, BTC and a couple of those things. But if you can't find it, I can do it at the end of the video. That's not a problem at all. All right, so uh, this is ADA. We're not gonna talk about that. So since this uh, break to the upside and retest, we were looking at the market in a more bullish sentiment due to not just the TA in BTC and the overall crypto market, but also the environment for global investors and global sentiment. Right now it's a risk on environment. So investors are seeking for higher, I guess risk, but higher reward, more speculative assets, instruments, investments, trades, and BTC would fall in that basket. So we are, we are seeing bids coming into BTC, which is overall bullishness for the cryptocurrency market, which looks pretty good. 
major level that we do have for key resistance is around 9400 and if it does make it we do have a key confluent zone where you have a descending trend line and a horizontal resistance and support create a level where it intersects and creates a confluent zone where there's a high probability that there's going to be sell pressure within this area but if the overall market continues for a risk on sentiment you know we could break that's very well a, a possibility but we do have to make sure that we're taking it day by day we're not projecting too much of a bias on the market um christian damn sorry i'll rewatch it yeah that's, that's not a problem um really uh we could do it again all good um i'm from oz so it's 6 a.m here oh shit wow okay well welcome from australia that's crazy. Or welcome to uh, Performante from Australia. That's crazy, man. Good job for waking up early. So uh, let's get back to the charts here. Um, and we can go back to oil if you'd like, if you just woke up. But um, it looks pretty good. You know, overall S&P is moving towards the upside. We already talked about the 9400 being our next target. So I think we can just see the continuation of the momentum towards the upside for BTC. Not a whole, whole lot to talk about in terms of new market data that is presented. Got a nice candle closure on the six hour. We could get a nice retest of around 9,200. Would not surprise me at all, but overall the momentum is to the upside and we're gonna treat the market as such. One thing to look at in my personal belief, uh, there have been some people already talking about the fundamentals, but we're not gonna get into the update, Shelly, all that stuff, but you can do your own research um, Cardano or ADA is uh, going to see some major fundamental catalyst, which is basically just hype news driven stories that are going to impact the decision from the buyers and sellers in this particular market. So we can see already on the four hour chart, very well respected symmetrical triangle. We could even zoom back to the weekly and go uh, all the way from there so we know that there is a major level of resistance coming in pretty here uh pretty shortly here around let's say if we're just looking at the wicks around 10.6 somewhere around there so just a little bit past the tick profit zone is going to be our next level of resistance might want to consider uh making that a little bit smaller, pretty good risk reward parameters in there. But what do we see when we are running up to it? So yes, we do have a resistance, but we do have to consider how fast we're running up to the zone. We see the initial zone right here that broke out. And then you get another continuation pattern. And then it does look like we're going to push back up to the upside. So overall momentum is strong for the bulls, but we do have to consider that there's going to be resistance coming up kind of near where the take profit is. So it does make sense where the take profit is. Now for the continuation pattern to the upside, we do see a nice symmetrical triangle. And when we jump to the four hour chart, very, very well respected all around. We see one, two, three, four validations of a key resistance for the sellers. And then one, two, three rejections from the buyers able to hold the price of making higher lows. So overall, really well respected zone you got a really big validation that this is yes a breakout massive massive bullish engulfing candle just taking out like really the significance of any real big move before this huge pump to the upside here back in late may so what are we looking for within this structure we already talked about it within our premium people or premium group premium guys but what we're looking for is a potential consolidation from the previous level of resistance right here to validate it as a new level of support. That, in my opinion, would be a fantastic opportunity, uh, which where you'd be looking for possible, you could look for a stop entry above the zone where you're looking for a breakout. You could be looking for a limit entry where you're gonna get uh, the entry when it pulls back in your direction. So when it pulls back to you, you'll be getting a great risk reward, but there's going to be lower dependability. But if you're going to put a stop entry above the zone, you'll have a lower risk reward, but you'll potentially have higher dependability. So you got to test out your own system, your own strategy, and just back test it, learn about it. But overall, that's going to be the two potential plays that we have with Cardano. It just depends on how bullish do you think it is. You'd be either looking for a stop entry above the zone, so you get triggered in when the momentum does push back to the upside, or you could be a little bit more aggressive, look for that greater risk reward and look for that entry when it does retest 
of this previous resistance, which is going to be acting as a potential new level of support. So that's Cardano. In my opinion, it looks pretty phenomenal. And you also have to consider the fact that there are fundamental catalysts that are playing along with the price action, which is the ideal situation is when you have news or some economic data, some something, some catalyst that is going to drive the market in either direction. And it's even better when the direction is the same. For example, if GDP is contracting, you, you expect the overall economy to go down, you expect the currency to go down. Um, you know, just simple understanding. If, if an earnings of a company is worse than the forecast, usually you expect the market to decide that the stock is worth less because it's producing less profits for the investors. So, you know, when the catalyst is in line with the price action, that's always great. And when the overall markets, not just in terms of cryptocurrency markets, but global markets is also providing an environment in which risk on investments, trades are uh, looked at as a positive thing because global investors are seeking risk. That is a really good environment. Um, we don't see the altcoin market be extremely explosive yet. Uh, this is the total two, which is the total cryptocurrency market cap, excluding Bitcoin. We're still in the trading range, right? So we're not seeing any real momentum coming into the market, but we can still capitalize on these shorter term plays within the price action, just behaving the way that it is. But in terms of should we be placing a lot more of our BTC slash Ethereum portfolio and pool into these smaller, more speculative alts. I personally don't think that's the time yet. I think if it does start breaking, we have a lot of movement to the upside before a lot of these alts hit near highs. And I'm not saying they all will. I don't think every single one will. But for the ones that have continued to progress through the crypto winter and has really stood out again for me, Binance Coin, Chainlink, really great alts that are more speculative. And then BTC and Ethereum are going to be the main ones that I keep the majority of my crypto portfolio in. That's how I like to manage my portfolio. I don't know about everyone else's, um, but I mainly stick to more, I guess not stable, but more, uh, not well respected, but the coins that have the longest history, I like to make sure that these coins are able to sustain the ups and downs of the crypto market and give me validation that there are going to be buyers coming into the market purchasing the coin in bear markets uh, and i just trust btc and ethereum right now maybe a little bit later on i'll trust some more alts but right now that's basically the game plan for me so that's basically it for the video um, we can go back to the oil if you'd like, because Christian from Australia is watching. And let's get this right here. Oh, that's not it. It's right here. All right, so US dollar, and this is crude oil, Western Texas Intermediate. So what we have is a nice ascending wedge. Basically, what I view the market as, so when we go back to the daily, is it's just a consolidation. On the daily, it shows it absolutely perfectly. Yes, we have these ascending zones that could potentially provide an opportunity, but as of right now, when we're looking at the daily, we just see an extremely clear horizontal channel where you're getting a well-respected resistance with the type A, type B, type A right there, candle closer, one, two, three, and then you're seeing a type a and a type B and you might see one more here. But right now we're just consolidating sideways on the daily chart. And if you're an intraday trader, you could be looking to sell at the highs, buy at the lows. So you're continuing the consolidation, which wouldn't be bad if you're looking at that from an overall global standpoint, that kind of makes sense. Um, if you're expecting to continue going up higher, you're extremely bullish, but you know, we've had massive pushes consolidation masses pushes consolidation this is potentially going to be a reaccumulation phase if it goes to the upside but in my personal view i don't like to project too far into the future for my bias so right now we're holding a nice ascending zone right here we're squeezing closer to the apex of this zone if it breaks to the upside we got another zone right here that's 
creating our nice ascending zone. So if it breaks to the upside, I'm not expecting a massive breakout just yet. Um, what, we, what we would be looking for for a potential long, if we were super bullish, is a melt up from this ascending wedge. So normally people use ascending wedges to go down and short. And yes, we do use them for shorting. But what we would be looking for, if you're looking for a long opportunity on crude oil, is for us to see a higher high, higher low validating the previous resistance as a new level of support, as well as validating the series of higher highs one more time. So we get three rejections of this zone. And then once that comes into play, you're looking for the price to break this ascending zone and then hold it for a new level of support. And then you could be looking for limit orders on the retest or stop entry and orders when you do break above the zone. And that would be an extremely bullish case. But if the price action presents that, that would be an opportunity. And then if it doesn't, if it holds this zone, like here, you'd just be looking at this sideways consolidation. You'd be looking for a lower low to come in before you're looking for a higher low entry on like a wedge or a channel or a triangle. Whatever the case, whatever your strategy is, um, that's what you'd be looking for. So that's my overall analysis on crude oil. It's just consolidating right now. It's definitely too early to say long or short unless you're intraday trading, expecting to make that your profit. Uh, I would say expecting this to break and not hit your stop loss in that same time frame would be a little bit too big of an ask, in my personal belief. I'd rather wait for confirmation so then you can enter somewhere up here, so then you have a long range before you get to your next major zone. Maybe it's right here, maybe it's right here, but you got a lot more room from here to here than you do from, let's say, like the break here into this zone right here. But that's just how I currently am looking at the market. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight Hopefully, also, you have a good day. You're definitely a little bit ahead of me. You're on your Thursday. I'm still on my Wednesday. A little bit afternoon, 1.16. Still got a whole day left. All right, so that's going to be my initial uh, look at crude oil. So I'll zoom that out. I want to keep it on silver because I'm currently in that. And I'll keep this on the BTC chart. That's basically the video of the day. Thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions that we didn't go over, this is your chance now. If you want us to look at a different alt, a stock, a commodity, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be open to it. We'll be very uh, flexible in what we present because it's the end of the video. So I will close off the recording and then open it up for a minute or two forever, who, for whoever wants to um, ask a question. But if there's no questions coming in, I will definitely close it and then continue on with my day. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, if you thought this was educational, informational, entertaining, it would be great if you would subscribe to our channel. Surprisingly, having an extremely hard time breaking a thousand. Um, if you have any things that might help the overall channel or help the growth of the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, any real suggestions, fine. Constructive criticism is the spice of life. And if you can't accept it, you're probably not going to grow in life. So if we're doing something like completely off, that's very obvious. Definitely uh, throw it in the comments. There's no real bad answers for that. So yeah, appreciate any of the comments that come in. And until next time, I hope you have a fantastic day. Until next time, have a good one.